Let's take a few moments to get to know personal pronouns in German a little bit better. This presentation is only going to focus on the nominative case. Other presentations later on will focus on accusative, dative, and genitive cases. Now, we use personal pronouns all the time in English. When you talk about yourself, I, or you are talking to your friend, you, um, he, she, it, those are all personal pronouns. What I want to focus on here with this slide is the way to describe the position of these personal pronouns in the language. Now, when we talk about personal pronouns, we usually describe them as being first person, second person, third person, singular or plural. Now, uh, two c the concepts we want to get across here is that there are a singular grouping of personal pronouns and a plural grouping of personal pronouns. If you're talking about yourself, you by yourself are one person, you're singular. You would be the first person singular, I. Now, bring another person into this conversation. This person is in the conversation in addition to you. This is a second person in the conversation. So this person by him or herself is singular, but in addition to yourself is the second person in the conversation. Therefore, this person is a second person singular personal pronoun. Now, we can also have other people involved in the conversation. Let's look at third person singular, he, she, and it. Now, this refers to people that may be in the conversation, but don't necessarily have to be present. You could be talking about a person who is in another class. So he is in a different class. She is in a different class. Uh, they don't have to be part of the conversation, but they're referred to tangentially in the conversation. So it's not me, it's not you, it's this other person, this third party, so to speak. So third person, singular, he, she, it. Now this concept of me, you, and this third party is applicable in the singular, but also in the plural. So we, as a group, uh, we, the people, first person, plural. Now, if you're from the South, there's a second person plural concept, and that's y'all. So you're referring to a group of people in a conversation other than yourself directly. So y'all come on by. Finally, you could be referring to a different party, uh, a third party in the plural sense. So they, the class of 2010, decided not to come. So the concept is that we have a first person, second person, third person, uh, in singular and also in plural. Now, German has the same thing. The concepts are the same. The forms are, of course, different. First person singular, ich. Second person singular, du. Third person singular, er, sie, es, he, she, it. Now, we also have that in the plural. Wir, second person, plural, ihr, third person, plural, singular. Now, whereas in English, the y'all, second person, plural, is something that's sort of a colloquialism. It's maybe uh, used a lot by people in the South, but not by people from California. In German, that is an accepted form, ihr. It's uh, used by everyone across the country. Now, there's another thing in German that's not in English um, that can be explained this way. Um, this is the formal. Now, the formal address is a person that you would uh, have respect for, but also a person that uh, it's not one way. It's not just I show respect to a person, but what you're also doing is you're signaling that I want to have distance from you. I show you respect, you show me respect. We have a working relationship. Uh, we're, we're, not, uh, we're not friends with each other. We are colleagues. So we have this in the singular. 
if you were working with a colleague at work, one person in addition to yourself in this conversation, this, this would be a second person singular formal. You, sir. Now the same thing is if we are, uh, we have the same thing in plural. If, for instance, we are presenting a paper at a business conference and there's a bunch of people in the audience that we want to show respect to, we would say, you, sirs, uh, and, and continue the continue the conversation. So we have the concept of formal in the singular but also in the plural. Uh, in German this is a frequently used uh, form of address, Z. What's nice is that second person form, formal, singular and plural, is the same in the singular and formal, uh, is in the singular and the plural. So. Now, I want to sort of step back a bit and refer to a prior presentation where we talked about German nouns. We've, uh, just, for, just as a way for review here, a German noun is masculine, feminine, and neuter. And we also determine that the definite articles for these nouns reflect that gender. So a masculine would be der, a feminine would be d, and a neuter would be das. So how does that impact or what, what does that fact, how does it come to bear in our discussion of personal pronouns? So talking about third person singular personal pronouns, he, she, it, well that is of course a question of masculine, feminine, and neuter as we see in this slide. What we can do in German is we can substitute the definite articles der, die, and das with the personal pronoun er, sie, and es, he, she, and it. So what is the benefit of that? Why should I substitute a definite article? Why should I substitute a definite article and a noun combination with a personal pronoun? And that is essentially a question of convenience, of also uh, language systems tend towards simplicity. People using language systems don't want to be bothered by complex rules. So there's always a tendency over time for shortening. Uh, so for instance, we could say das Auto is klein, the car is small. Now the bolded script here, das Auto, is a noun. It's also a neuter singular. So it's a third person neuter singular noun. What we can do here is substitute das Auto with S, a personal pronoun, a third person singular neuter personal pronoun. So instead of saying das Auto is klein, so which would be five syllables, one, two, three, das Auto is klein, yeah, five syllables, we can instead say three syllables, S is klein. So it comes out quicker, it's uh, more easy to say, I don't have to continually refer back to das Auto, das Auto, das Auto. It gets repetitive. So instead, after I establish the fact that we're talking about das Auto, from then on I could simply say S, S is Klein. So we could use that with neuter nouns, but we could also use it with any other noun, masculine or feminine. Here we have a masculine singular noun, der Mann. Der Mann ist groß. The man is large. So again, after I've established the fact that we're talking about the man, I don't need to continually refer back to der Mann, der Mann, der Mann. I can simply say, er is groß. Person, substitute the noun, the complete noun, with the definite article, der Mann. Substitute that with the personal pronoun, third person singular masculine, er. Uh, 